Welcome brothers and sisters to our Lenten series entitled Junk in the Yard. We are reflecting on the marks of the sin of pride and how we can come out from certain attitudes with the grace of God that may be problematic, that can be attached to our lives and we find ourselves uh, stuck, unable to live in the freedom of the children of God. We are guided by the flesh, by the old man, rather than by the Holy Spirit. All of us are weak and imperfect and faulty. I would think we all agree with that. Sometimes we can hide our mistakes, especially when it comes to the moral area of our lives. We fall, we make mistakes, we sin, we are weak. And how we deal with our weakness and how we treat our fallen nature is very important. A prideful person would be very disappointed with himself or herself, would say, I can't believe I did this or that. Once again, I fell. How come I'm not perfect? How come I cannot have all these things nicely squared up and worked out and nothing would be problematic and faulty and crooked? A prideful person dislikes actually abhors the fact that he or she is a fallen creature. We forget about the fact that we are born with the original sin, that through the culture, our upbringing, our life altogether, we have many dark areas in our lives and at different occasions they surface up and we don't like to see ourselves being hateful, selfish, greedy, and all other marks of the prince of darkness, of the devil. Aren't we disappointed with our own responses and our faults? Sometimes when it comes to the moral area of our lives, our sexuality, charity, the way we deal with others. Once again, I was selfish. I can't believe I fell again and I have to go to confession. When will I finish going to confession and God will make me so perfect that I'm not gonna need his forgiveness? Sometimes I heard people say, I would like to reach a point of perfection that no one will be able to criticize me and I will be perfectly happy with how I am. How does it sound? Familiar? We dislike and are deeply discontented and even in self-contempt when we see our own faults and especially when others notice them and point them to us saying, Look, once again, how come you go to church? How come you go to confession, you go to the Eucharist and you pray, and once again you fail? What is our answer to that? I know many people who quit on religion, on faith, on prayer, got very disappointed with their own imperfections, and they decided that they don't need faith anymore since God didn't perfect them according to their own liking. But these are the marks of a very prideful person who does not welcome and accept the fact that he or she is faulty, is weak, is very imperfect. And here is a critical element of welcoming God's mercy into our lives and how He would like us to view who we are and how to approach our imperfections.
the Lord comes to us and through the wisdom of the saints whom we have been given throughout the many centuries of the church's existence, we find out how we can get out with the grace of God from those traps. Number one, we are called to be liberated from the tyranny of perfectionism. Everything that I named earlier has to do with one's own longing to be spotless, blameless, and pure as the Blessed Virgin Mary. Unfortunately, on this earth will never end up like that. To enter heaven, we need to be pure and spotless. And that's why the constant purification, conversion, the process of turning to the Lord and welcoming His grace is so much needed. We are called to be freed from this false perfectionism, recognizing we are fallen creatures. Ah, it's so difficult to accept this fact. I'm not saying that now we should cultivate our vices and uh, brag about them as messy as our lives might be, but rather to say with humility and serenity and meekness, as Saint Francis de Sales teaches, I am weak, why should I beat myself up? I am imperfect. And Saint Therese of Lisieux would say, why would I be so surprised that I fell? I'm a child, and a child falls many times and calls upon his or her mother to be lifted up. And a parent comes to lift me up, St. Therese says. I'm not surprised nor scandalized with my own faults. I'm a child. I'm imperfect. That is why I need the mercy and love of the Lord in my life. Because I fall many times. And a just man falls seven times. But if he or she stands up, leaning on the Lord, invoking the mercy of God, that is a great victory. These days of Lent, we fall many times. And again, the Lord maybe already showed that we have other areas that we ignore in our lives and they are very dirty. They are not uh, pleasing to the Lord at all. Should we throw in the towel and get disappointed with ourselves and walk around sad that we are imperfect? No! We turn to the Lord humbly as the leper who came to Jesus Christ and kneeling in front of him said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Kneeling in front of the Lord, you can heal me, you can purify me, you can repair my life, Lord. Don't you think God loves you at this very moment, being imperfect? When we say God loves you, He doesn't love a projection of yourself as you would like to be, but He loves this very person who is weak, imperfect, and faulty. Sometimes we think God is seeing us already so spotless and blameless, and He's longing for us to be like that which is true, but He loves the very concrete person. He knows we cannot free ourselves from our weaknesses and imperfections. He knows our tears and frustrations and how oftentimes we're um, in a complete self-resignation about who we are, why we are so weak. Now, God loves you and tells you today Welcome my love and love yourself being faulty. What? You want me to accept that I'm so uh, horrible? As sometimes we speak about ourselves. Yes, I love you. My grace will work in you. I will lift you up. I will help you. Don't beat yourself up. Treat yourself with mercy, gentleness and tenderness, as St. Francis de Sales teaches, because more harshful and uh, 
uh, contemptful and even hateful you are towards yourself, less progress there will be in your life. As a matter of fact, you will be more discouraged and frustrated with your imperfections. Today, as we begin this new day during Lenten season, let us look at our mistakes and faults with the eyes of love that the Lord is giving us. Thank you, Lord, for being perfect. Thank you that I need you, that I can turn to you, that I don't have to pretend to be someone I am not because you love me as I am. And please grant me the grace and purify me that I may be pleasing to you. Show me the path I should go about my life. This is a sign of humility. The acceptance of being sinful, of needing God's mercy, but that's absolutely beautiful. We need His love, His forgiving goodness, His graciousness to be able to start this new day looking at Him. God bless you, brothers and sisters, as we continue our Lenten series. Father, give me the humility which realizes its ignorance, admits its mistakes, recognizes its needs, welcomes advice, and accepts rebukes. Amen.